Hello, my name is Bill Furlong. I am an author. I have written an autobiography of my experiences growing up in Portsmouth. It is called Where There's a Bill, There's a Way. I was six. It was 1971. I am autistic. Six was the age I was supposed to have started to behave oddly. Between six and eleven, I was supposed to have been more adventurous than my brother. I went off on my own to Cosham by bus. Are autistic people more adventurous than others? Are they more prepared to explore the world in order to make up for being cut off from it? When I was eleven, I was wandering the streets around our house in the early afternoons and evenings. I was walking up one road one day, the road leading up to the hill over Britting Portsmouth, as I was planning to walk along the edge of the hill, when a boy with long dark hair stood in front of me and would not let me pass. He wanted me to do the Tetley T Folk Folk Dance. This was a dance performed by cartoon characters in a television advert. If I tried to get past him, he slapped my face. The shock was too great for me to retaliate. It was too sudden. I could not punch him directly, not just because I was too timid, but also because I could not really work out whether it was acceptable socially. As if my social and physical consciousness were not working in conjunction together. My social consciousness might not have been properly developed at this stage to be able to deal with a confrontation like this. Many years later, between the ages of 18 and 30, I would have dealt with this by saying, I was just walking up the road when you stood in my way. Will you please move aside? As for what he tried to make me do, I would have said, I don't want to do what you want. I'll do what I want to do. It's a strange thing to stop someone and want them to do a silly dance. When he slapped me, I would have hit back, or I would have threatened to go to the police. He claimed in this particular incident, and on other occasions, that I had sworn at him. I believed, from what my parents and others had told me, in turning the other cheek. I confirmed she was turning the other cheek verbally, i.e. ignoring insults, who turned the other cheek in a literal and physical sense, ignoring physical abuse. I wanted to stand up for myself, but did not know how to. At the bottom of an alley where this bully once cornered me, I tried expressing myself to him. I tried to talk about rights and prerogatives, but it just came out as nonsense. He's a divvy, isn't he? The bully said incredulously to a boy who had been passing and intervened. What had come out of my mouth must have seemed bizarre to him. Divvy was the term he used to describe me. I managed to get away from him that time. At other times he would beat me up. My parents, especially my father, urged me to fight back. One day we'll discover what a nasty, vicious place this world is. So you fuck that kid, he had urged. Talking about how nasty and vicious my father claimed the world seemed to be sounded corny and trite at the time. If word gets round that you allow this kid to fuck you, other kids will see you and know you're easy meat. My father had said it at the dinner table. I knew what he had said made sense, but did not want to accept it. A huge amount had been building up, and the cold weather made me groggy. A big decision, the first ever big decision in my life, was hammering away at me. I decided to try to sort out my problem by writing them down. I had been having suicidal thoughts at the back of my mind, involving a railway station I frequently passed. I began to write, and eventually turned to my past experiences. As I wrote, 
words, their symmetry began to take on a pattern and a new realisation began to form. You're autistic, a voice screamed. Liberating me from what? I began to write more and more, faster and faster, about my life and experiences, aching, a kind of euphoria. You're autistic. It was a huge accidental self-diagnosis that may have saved my life. I worked day and night on the writing, only sleeping when I needed to. In a few days I produced a substantial amount of work. Since then I have become more tenacious in what I do. When I was 30 I had been considered more assertive and I continued with that assertion still. I have become involved with various groups including an amateur dramatic society. I have twice travelled to China to take part in two charity events. I have also tried finding a girlfriend. After 32 years imprisonment, I had realised my condition.